So today we have the 2020 Lincoln Aviator, which is what I believe is Lincoln's best effort at an SUV recently. And today we're gonna to take a full detailed look at everything on the exterior, the interior, and of course we're gonna take it for a test drive and check everything out. Let's get started. As we dive in under the hood, Lincoln is not messing around. So standard, they're gonna give you 400 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque with their direct-injected twin-turbocharged 3.0-liter V6. That's also going to come with Lincoln's 10-speed automatic transmission. We'll talk about how that drives later in the test drive. Rear-wheel drive is standard, but you can get all-wheel drive. So it's not a front-wheel drive bias crossover like many. It's a rear-wheel drive crossover. Miles per gallon front-wheel drive will range from 18 city to 26 highway, and all-wheel drive 17 city to 24 highway. But wait, there's more. So not only do you get that turbocharged engine option, you can also get a hybrid option, which is gonna give you over 600 pound-feet of torque. I'm really excited to test that out. Aside from that, the hybrid is gonna give you a sound insulation package, and you're even gonna get the adaptive suspension standard, which we actually have on our particular model. The Aviator is not just a smooth riding luxury crossover, it can also tow. The gas model can tow 6,700 pounds. Now as we take a look at the exterior, the Aviator has a very classic and sleek design while still having a modern appeal ranging from the base Aviator to the Reserve, Grand Touring and all the way up to this top black label trim. So starting right up front, let me quickly go through everything. So first of all, we've got standard full LED headlights and we on our top trim get the adaptive pixel LED headlights and they are also speed dependent. You also get the LED daytime running light. I'll show you a little bit more in my night video. See that blinker there? And then LED fog lights as well down here. Lincoln blends some chrome pieces in here. You can see that grill looks very nice. You can even get an illuminated star that I'll show you a little bit later. And at night, this Lincoln Aviator looks really good. These headlights do really well. It's very classy and you'll never mistake these headlights. This paint color is called Pristine White Metallic Tri-Coat. Just like that Navigator that I showed you, it's a very clean looking white, it's not ivory, but it does have a little bit of metallic in it as well. Coming over to the wheels, they're gonna range quite a bit depending on the trim level. The base is gonna get 19s, but our black label here gets these 22 inch wheels. They are massive, fill out these wheel wells. I'll tell you what it's like in terms of driving dynamics in a bit. You have Aviator on the side here. That is kind of nice with the little chrome piece and the black. These mirrors have indicators in them, blind spot indicators, they're automatic dimming and power folding with memory settings. The Aviator is 199 inches long, so it is a good sized vehicle in terms of exterior dimensions, although it's nowhere near as big as the Lincoln Navigator. And we even have the $3,000 dynamic handling package with the adaptive suspension that I'll talk more about in the test drive. And then as we start to round out the back, what do y'all think of the design of the Aviator? I think it fits well. I think it's a good look for an American luxury SUV of this type. I like Lincoln, written right across there with the black writing. A super massive LED light bar. It's a redundant LED taillight. You get LED taillight standard full LED, and this really stands out at night as well. And then down at the bottom, we get the quad chrome exhaust tips. Driver assist features and safety tech are becoming more and more popular and Lincoln Copilot 360 is standard on here, plus this has a ton of more safety features. I have a full run through of all those types of safety features on the Ford Explorer. If you want to check that out, look in the description below. Some luxury SUVs and crossovers prioritize styling over practicality and cargo space, but this Lincoln still has good space. You get a hands-free, excuse me, not a hands-free, but you get a power lift gate standard but you can option up and get the available hands-free lift gate like this one. And hopefully you can tell there, but this has the air glide suspension with dynamic lowering upon entry or loading. And you can turn that off or on. So what that means is this just lowered down. Hopefully you can see that when I fast forwarded. And when it did it, this about clocked me in the head. So just watch out for that. If you don't want the suspension to lower the aviator for easier loading or entry, you don't have to, you can turn that off on the main screen. Okay, so as we take a closer look at the cargo area, behind the third row, you've got 18.3 cubic feet, good enough to throw some small luggage or some carry on suitcases. One nice thing is that there are a couple of tie downs. There's a tie down on each side, as well as a little hook like that that could be used for a net or grocery bags. On the other side, you get the same thing, plus you get a light, you got controls to fold down your third row and a 12 volt power outlet. 
So if I fold those down, you can fold down one side at a time, or you can do both automatically, where you don't have to hold the button. And then once those are down, you get 41.8 cubic feet, which is definitely not bad, but certainly not great. And then 77.7 .7 when you fold down the second row on each side to give you a fairly flat load floor, which is nice. The only bummer is that you have to actually go up to the second row to fold it down. First world problem, but at 80 something thousand dollars, I'd expect those to fold down. And when you're done, just swipe your foot under there and it'll close for you. Easy as that. One disappointing thing is that Lincoln doesn't really do anything to distinguish its key fob from Ford. Obviously they're from the same company, but it's still kind of mostly plastic, even though it is practical and still easy to use. And you also get remote start standard. Lincoln also gives you standard, the Lincoln Embrace illuminated approach to where the front will light up the front lights, the door handles, the rear lights, and you even get the welcome mats next to the door. And hopefully right now you can see just how low this aviator is right now. Look at the wheel wells. This vehicle has scrunched down and shrunken itself to make it easier for you to get in. That's part of our package with the air glide suspension. For entry, it's the intelligent entry where you don't need to unlock the vehicle. You can stick your hand back here, push a little button. It also has the touchpad on the door where you can also lock it with that and you don't need to have your key fob with you. But we also have soft closed doors and light touch. So there's really a little tiny pad back there that you can just gently squeeze and it's gonna pop the door open. And then we have soft closed doors to where once it gets to where it's pretty much closed, it'll close on its own. So you don't have to slam the door anymore. The aviator is going to give you a few different seating options. So starting on the base aviator, you'll just get your basic 10-way power adjustable seats with two-way lumbar support. Those will also have memory settings, but you can get the luxury package or jump up to the black label that we have right here in order to get the perfect position 30-way power seats with active motion massage. And we have this nice mahogany red leather. They are perforated, they're heated and ventilated with memory settings. They have adjustable bolstering, adjustable pretty much everywhere, and they are very comfortable. I love these seats. They're comfortable, they're so adjustable, you can customize them in a number of different ways without it being ridiculous. And you can do all of that over on the door with the little pad or with the little outline of your seat. So it's not that difficult to control. And as a step up from Ford, the massaging function is more customizable. So you can do just the lower rolling up, rolling down, you can do a full recovery, pretty much whatever you want for your massage. That's for driver and passenger. A leather steering wheel is standard and on the reserve trim and higher, you'll get a power wheel and we can get the entry exit system as well. And you could probably see me raising up right now because the vehicle is lifting up from its entry height. And to top it off, the aviator gives you optional personal profiles where you can have your own customized audio, climate, etc., a whole bunch of different settings. As you take a look at the interior, Lincoln has a combination of modern looks as well as classic luxury looks as well and a blend of nice materials throughout the cabin. Starting over on the door, that whole upper portion is a nice soft material. You have the stitching, you have a padded armrest here, which isn't super soft, but it does give you a little bit. And even down here is a nice soft material, although it certainly doesn't have to be. Seat controls and memory settings are there on the door and a nice speaker grill. You've got all automatic windows. In fact, the front and the back windows are laminated thick so that they should help with wind noise. There's a bottle holder with a little bit of storage in the front and the back. And this is actually how you open the door. I have a little bit of a problem with that. If you have your hand here, it's not ergonomic to really reach and do that. Of course, you can just push like that or push like that, but I like a real door handle. Um, and the other thing is, if that doesn't work for some reason, there's actually an emergency door open button down there. So. I know I'm not a big fan. Super small complaint, but right on the inside, you've got your light controls. You have some nice materials there, even all the way up onto the dash and coming all the way across. So it's a very nicely laid out interior in terms of materials, pretty much all around. Push button start is up here and it is standard. Lincoln steering wheel is comfortable to hold on to. It's also heated, leather wrapped, it's got some nice grips on it. There's a voice button right here, which I have accidentally hit a couple of times. I'm not a huge fan of it right there, but I guess it's ergonomic. You know, you can just touch it whenever you need to. Another little complaint, 
is that these buttons right here or these switches are concave instead of convex and it takes a little bit of getting used to i'm still not a huge fan of how those feel on the thumb so the interesting thing is the lights will actually map out on the steering wheel depending on what you're using so you press the cruise control and all of a sudden your cruise control buttons all pop up down here it also has paddle shifters plastic paddle shifters mounted to it feel kind of cheap and that stock over there gives you rain sensing windshield wipers and you can even use it to wash your camera like your backup camera and right in front of us lincoln gives us a 12.3 inch display there is quite a bit of stuff that you can see on here using your steering wheel but it's not my favorite in terms of its speed it's kind of slow um, and not everything really pops up exactly when you want it to but there's a good amount of information that you can still scroll through but like i said it's just a little laggy but it does look nice and clear then right up above you've got a head-up display which is crispy clear as well and it shows you a lot of information so i have some stuff turned off but you can turn on more information like you see right there and you can completely turn the whole thing off if you want as we move over to the tablet style screen lincoln gives us a 10.1 inch screen that has 4g wi-fi sirius xm navigation and a 10 speaker system standard but we have some options on here so first of all we have the 28 speaker system which sounds fantastic the revel ultima 3d system it sounds absolutely amazing in here this is very similar to what you'll be used to in other ford and lincoln products it's not the fastest it's not the fanciest but it's got pretty much everything that you'd expect or want or need on here including apple carplay android auto including those personal profiles i talked about and a bunch of different little things that you can do on here in addition to that if we go ahead and put it in reverse not only do we have dynamic lines and a hitch line with our backup camera, but you also have overhead view 360 camera. Without shifting into reverse, you can hit that little camera button and access that as well. You also have active park assist to where it can parallel and perpendicular park for you. I showed you this on the Ford Explorer in that safety demonstration video if you want to check that out. The shifter is right there, which is, you know, I'm not too keen on a push button shifter, but it works it's it's smooth it's just not where you're used to it being like down here you actually have to reach up to do it kind of like a column shifter but small complaint you do still get a few physical controls for your radio like you can see your volume and tuning knob which is nice and then we have dual zone climate control up here but you also have your own climate controls for the back as well so you technically have quad zone and then tri-zone on some vehicles. Got your heated seats, heated uh, steering wheel, ventilated seat controls, all right there. And unlike some luxury brands that have a command dial or knob right here that's kind of nicely ergonomic, you don't get that. You have to actually touch the screen with Lincoln. As well as a couple of USB charging ports. You can close it if you want. Same with these cup holders. Cup holders have nice ambient illumination in them as well as a little storage bin. And my bottle fits just fine and then down here you've got your parking brake and the drive modes the drive modes are really delayed when they show up on here a little bit annoying but you have kind of a sport mode eco mode normal mode slippery mode or even deep mode where you get a little bit extra ground clearance in addition to that behind all this you kind of get a layered center console where you get an extra little storage bin that also has illumination at night the center armrest is nice and wide and long and very comfortable. It's in a good spot. You have illumination here. You have a 12 volt power outlet and some nice softly lined storage. I guess my biggest complaint with the interior is this uh, piano black plastic right here. I don't really care that it's hard to touch. I just don't like the black plastic because it gets lint and scratches on it very easily. The other thing is in order to turn the auto stop start off, you have to press that button and then you have to touch the screen to do it and same with your brake hold you do have brake hold but you have to push that button and then touch the screen as you'd expect lincoln gives you a locking glove box that is soft opening and softly lined and illuminated lincoln gives you a frameless dimming mirror you have a couple little gentle ambient lights right there touch sensitive into your led lighting you got sunglass holder there's no conversation mirror which is a little bit of a surprise then you also get garage controls up here as well and to add to that, you get this panoramic Vista roof that I'll kind of show you a little bit more in the back seat, but it goes all the way back and you can even control it from the back seat. One other thing is that we have this really nice mahogany red to match our leather, which is soft touch all the way for this headliner. 
unnecessary, but very nice indeed. And one more thing, at night you get ambient lights with a few different colors, and it looks really nice in this cabin and gives it a really nice ambiance at night. In the second row, the Aviator can give you bench seats or bucket seats, and we have the bucket seats with the full center console as an option. This back seat isn't quite big luxury sedan standard, but it is still a nice, comfortable place to be, especially if you're hauling a family around. So these seats are, we have the bucket seats, you have these folding armrests on both sides. These seats can manually scoot forward and backwards through a pretty large range of motion, and they can also recline a decent amount. With our full console, you can access the Vista moonroof all by yourself. You don't have to have anybody in the front do it, and you've got a nice view back here. In addition to that, one more really nice thing are these manual sunshades. So you can lift it, hook it up on both sides if you have a baby back here, or just if you want to block the sun. Knee space, leg room is really good in this second row. I'll show you the third row in just a sec. But back here, you've got full control of a few different charging ports. You can control heated or ventilated seats, the climate for both sides of the back seat, and audio and all that, which is really nice. You also get this full-on center console that has an integrated storage bin, some charging ports, control of the Vista moonroof, a little more storage area, and some cup holders. Now getting into the third row, in order to get this second row out of the way, there's a little button right there you can press, and it kind of kicks that seat out of the way, or at least releases it, to where somebody can push it forward without much effort. You've got a decent size area to get in. Obviously, you can't go in through the middle because of that center console, but it'll work. Now I'm back into the third row, I have this side almost all the way forward where I'd be able to sit up there and be okay for a little while at five foot nine, but my knees in the back of it. And then right there with that one all the way back, there's no way I'm sitting behind that. And with that center console, it takes away some of your middle area. So you gotta decide how important this full center console is. But the nice thing is there are charging ports in there because there's extra charging ports on that uh, rear center console up there. So both second row and third row can have charging ports. There's a little cup holder on each side, plus there are air vents on each side, which could be good for you or if you have a pet with the third row folded down. All right, y'all, we are just getting going in this Lincoln Aviator. So in this test drive, I'm gonna give you impressions as far as just my first off impressions of driving the Aviator, kind of how it compares to the Navigator and maybe even the Ford Explorer as well. So you can see the head-up display right there off in the distance, obviously. It's probably flickering for you, so I'm gonna shut it off, but I just kinda wanted to wanted to let you see that uh, just right off the bat. So first impressions of the Aviator is that when I first got in here, I definitely felt like this was smooth. Um, I didn't drive it on any rough roads right away. It was mostly highway, and it was just a really nice, comfortable, quiet, and smooth ride. And that's exactly what you want. And it's got a very refined delivery of power, as you'll see in a little bit. So obviously compared to the Navigator, this is quite a bit smaller, although this is not a small vehicle, but it's also a quick vehicle. It's definitely a little more spry than the Navigator in terms of initial acceleration and handling, because the Navigator is quite a bit bigger. Now I do have a full review of that Navigator if you're cross shopping with that and the Ford Explorer Platinum if you're cross shopping with that as well. One of my biggest complaints with the Ford Explorer Platinum was the harsh ride with the big wheels as well as the, the, the jerkiness and dis, indecisiveness of the transmission. And that is a lot better here for whatever reason. Part of it is that we have the adaptive suspension and this actually has road a road scanner to where it uses your camera, it scans the road for potholes and it's constantly making adjustments based off what that camera sees. So that is really cool. You've got a really nice ride experience in here. As far as the steering comfort, this has adaptive steering. So it's gonna change it's gonna change a little bit your steering ratio at high interstate speeds and low city speeds. So you have pretty much effortless steering at low speeds where there's not a lot of weight to the steering wheel, which is nice. Um, it's pretty easy to steer, but once you get going, you get a little bit more heft involved, and um, it's it honestly, I think it's it's really good no matter what speed you're going. It's not sports car like. It does have a little bit of numbness to it uh, compared to some vehicles like that, but overall, 
handling is confident and feels good and I think the adaptive suspension plays well into that as well because it's going to help control the body lean some but you still get a fair amount of body lean and some squat and dive slowing and accelerating but that is not what this is about this is a pretty blissful driving experience dumbs ev or numbs everything out pretty well one big note is that we do have 22 inch wheels the bigger the wheels the smaller the rubber the more that you're going to feel in terms of impact from not so nice road surfaces now getting onto the brakes right there the brakes in here feel good nothing out of the ordinary just a nice pedal feel and while we're sitting here I'm just going to kind of quickly tell you about ergonomics in here i like where everything is things seem to work pretty well in terms of ergonomics and placement auto stop start was off it is now uh, or the engine was off it is now back on not sure if you heard that it is pretty smooth with its turning off and on the screen is in a good spot easy to touch all these buttons down here steering wheel is comfortable to hold on to now i just turned it into excite mode it shows up on your display right there basically a sport mode and right off the bat excite mode once we get going we'll keep the rpms up sporty experience if you really want it to be like that it's not a sporty handler but you got 400 horsepower twin turbocharged engine why not have a little bit of fun sometimes handling is okay it's definitely not going to be german-esque sports car sport suv type but throttle response pedal down that was pretty good um, a little bit of a delay, but I have not had nearly as much indecisiveness with the 10-speed in this application. For whatever reason that is, same, I mean, we still got a 10-speed transmission, still got a 3-liter turbo, but it's been smoother. There has still been some times of jerkiness, but it's been a lot better than that Ford Explorer was. And this is just a, an, a blissful vehicle to drive. That's just the way I would describe it. I'm gonna put it back in uh, normal mode. In fact, well, sorry, we're still in excite mode. That is delayed. Now we're in conserve. I put the cruise control on. These buttons show up down here. And I'm gonna let you kind of see how this does. It has a pretty advanced system with its lane keeping system, lane centering, as well as the adaptive cruise control. It can even change your speed. Uh, like I said, if you want to see a demonstration of that, check in the description below that I did with the Ford Explorer. But this does a lot for you. I'm gonna let the vehicle slow down for me. I'm not gonna touch the brake. That band is slowing down and it's doing this for me. Watch this. It's probably gonna wanna follow the van a little bit. Yep, a little indecisive, but look at that. It did a good job correcting itself and keeping us straight. Now, obviously, keep your hands on the wheel. This is not meant to replace you as a driver. Now, road noise is pretty good, wind noise especially. So we have laminated glass here and laminated glass in the second row. That's something you don't always see. We're now getting onto a rougher textured road that brings in some road noise. There's a little bit more road noise than I was expecting. This is still a quiet vehicle, don't get me wrong. It's still quiet. Uh, wind noise is very good, but there has been a little bit of wind noise that I've heard from this back window in my left ear, so at high speeds. But otherwise, it's a quiet vehicle. Most of you will be very impressed and happy with how quiet it is. In terms of daily driving, this Aviator, it has been very enjoyable. It's a relaxing drive. It's a comfortable drive. I love all the adjustments that you have for your seat. It's quiet. It is comfortable, and it's probably even more comfortable with some smaller wheels. Now let's go ahead and wrap things up on this Aviator. So to close things out on this 2020 Lincoln Aviator, what do y'all think of it? Lincoln gives you a lot of different options in terms of different luxury features that you can go from, a few different trim levels, and obviously this black label that we have right here is fully loaded. In this three row luxury class, I think Lincoln has done a nice job. Lincoln put a good effort in. They've got a nice powertrain. They've got luxury features inside, some things that are higher end, of course, 
excellent headlights, and just a nice overall package. Leave your comments down below. Be sure to check out the night video that I did of this Lincoln with these really awesome headlights. Thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe for weekly reviews and have a great day.